Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, guys, we're going to talk to you guys about Colombia 1, Uruguay 0. And let's talk about this game. Now, before I talk about the game itself, let's look at the starting level for both teams, and then we'll talk about the game and then give you guys my thoughts. So looking at Colombia's 11, that was pretty much the best 11 they could have lined up with. Obviously, Lerma did come back for the suspension, which was huge. Um, obviously, he had that one-game suspension against Panama. And that was probably the best 11. As for Uruguay, they went with a bit of a different approach. And I was a bit surprised to see how Uruguay started this 11. Because I was surprised to see that uh, they put Aguate at center back. When he's traditionally a CDM. I was obviously not so... Uh, obviously, we knew Araujo coming into this game was suspended. We obviously knew that... Um, what is it called? Uh, that Hernandez, the right back, he was suspended as well. So Uruguay had to make two changes to the back. That was pretty much enforced changes. So they replaced with Uguatse and Cacares. End of that first half, man, Uruguay were terrible. Because as good as or as good as because the thing is, Uruguay, the only chances that came for Uruguay in the first half was all Nunes. Nunes should have scored some of those chances, guys. I, sp I think there was that one chance he had, he should have scored. The amount of chances Nunes missed this game was absolutely bon bonkers to me. Like, this is why I say Nunes is a hot and cold player. Nunes is such a, he, at times he could be a very good player, but at times he could also be a terrible player. He's a very inconsistent player, guys. And Colombia were really good that first half, especially in set pieces. And I told you guys against Panama how good they were set pieces. Because once again, man, Hamas Rodriguez puts in a beautiful cross there for Lerma. And Lerma heads it in. And that's Hamas' sixth assist for him in the Copa America. And Lerma, man, getting another goal there. Great header. And at that point, you're thinking, okay, Colombia's 1-0 up. How, how are they going to go? And then we have the big moment just before halftime. Munoz gets himself sent off. It's just a stupid, stupid reckless foul. And he gets himself two yellows in the process. And he gets sent off. Very much terrible decision making there from Munez. And it almost cost us the game because the thing with red cards, guys, that I don't like about red cards is that oftentimes a red card can pretty much change the out, uh, out perspective of the game. That one team goes super defensive and one team goes super offensive. And generally, the team with 10 men generally loses. That's usually how it goes. So I I was thinking, oh, man, Munoz, why do you have to cost yourself a game? And now Uruguay would have the ascendancy, right? Then halftime, a big change was made, obviously. Arios is sacrificed. They bring in the right back. And they have to do it because obviously you have to compensate for the right back being lost. And Uruguay, man, they did it. They made the, they also made two changes themselves. They took off Palestri. Uh, they took off uh, Palestri off. And they also took off Oliveira on. And they brought on their Scotta and Oliveira on to make an impact. And you know what the crazy thing is? Even when Uruguay were down, even when Uruguay were up in man, Uruguay didn't really create a lot of good opportunities. It took until Suarez to come on that Suarez actually created a very good opportunity there. That was a great chance there for Suarez. Uh, I believe it's a 71st minute. That was a huge chance. De La Cruz also had the chance there. Uruguay had a lot of close chances in the second half because obviously they had the more of the possession and everything because they, obviously they're a man up. But Uruguay, they weren't able to create a lot of good opportunities. It took until like I think the 68th minute for them to actually, 68th minute for them to actually get a goal scoring opportunity, which was crazy. Right, and then Colombia, man, they had those chances, man. Colombia had those chances in stoppage time, in particular. I don't know how they missed those chances, especially this one there, Urebe, and stoppage time, man. He should have scored that. And then this one here, right here, Urebe, 88th minute. This was a big chance, man. And uh, then even Alarma had a chance to right there when Uruguay Bush pushing men there for the desperate for the equalizer when the goalkeeper was pushing up forward. And yeah, man, so. It just showed you how well Colombia were defensively and how fantastic were they were. Because let's be real, guys. As good as Uruguay chances were, Colombia created the more quality chances. Colombia missed the more bigger chances. Uruguay, you can see here on my uh, XG right here, guys. Seven shots, two on target, but no big chances. No big chances missed. Colombia had two big chances, two big chances missed. So even when Colombia were down a man, they created better goal scoring opportunities than Uruguay that were up a man. So I'm sorry, this is embarrassing to Uruguay. How do you have a man advantage and not be able to score is crazy to me. It's crazy to me. I don't care how much possession you have. I don't care how many shots you have, how many shots on target. You cannot be in allowing yourself to be dominated in the second half in terms of quality of chances. Obviously, Uruguay created the more chances. They obviously created the, that stuff. But Uruguay didn't really create any great goal scoring opportunity. 
And that's the thing is that for Uruguay, as I said, man, it's very disappointing. Very disappointing from Uruguay. And I think Colombia just showed you how good they were defensively. And you have to give credit to their coach, uh, Nestor Lozano. He because he made a lot of cha- he he made some fantastic defensive changes. You know, brought in Yuri Mina, Matheus Oribe, Kevin Castro- uh, Kevin Castano, and Luis Sinistera. Obviously, I know Luis Sinistera is an offensive player, but the fact that Uribe and Yuri Mina came on, Yuri Mina came on was I was getting worried. I was like, oh my god, I don't trust Yuri Mina because we all know how Yuri Mina is washed nowadays. The fact that Yuri Mina came on, they still kept a clean sheet is a testament to how good they are defensively, and so. For Colombia, as I said, man, this is a statement win, as I said, because not only just to beat Uruguay, but to beat them with 10 men is a very, very incredible achievement. And for Colombia, man, they're going to be in the Copa America final, guys. We haven't seen Colombia be in a Copa America final, I believe, since 2001. This is history in the making. And Colombia are still unbeaten. The last team to beat Colombia and the last team to beat Colombia was Argentina. Can Colombia win the Copa America? We'll see on Sunday, guys. We will see on Sunday, guys. So, like I said, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this review. And once again, man, shout out to Colombia, man. Shout out to what they did. And um, for Uruguay, man, very disappointing. Bielsa, man. And it just shows that Bielsa ball, man, it's just not in in tournament football. Bielsa just doesn't work in tournaments. And we saw that here once again. And, yeah, so commiserations to Uruguay. And shout out to Colombia for making their first. Copa America final since I believe 2001. So if you guys did enjoy this video, guys, please remember to like and subscribe. Let me know if there's any major talking points. Comment section below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later.